And so, so if I could zoom in enough to this and it had high enough resolution, yeah. I would start to see the patterns that you that we just that we just looked at. But uh, exactly. Because a lot of people have asked me this and you sent me some excellent links to, to sort of help me out to understand this. The, these spikes, these are due to the the different segments of the mirror, the hexagonal shapes of those of those segments. Is that is that why? Is it is it some sort of Fourier kind of transform effect? What what are we what are we seeing exactly with these these spikes? Yeah, so this so this is due to the optical geometry of the telescope, basically the design. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a long exposure image. So everything is being averaged out and, and all the, the fine structures of the image of the star, of the bright star and the spikes are actually uh, kind of uh, saturated, if you will. Not really saturated, but, but you can't really see those details. But if you zoom in this image, I don't know if you have a zoom on uh, it. I might be able to get a fine structure. Yeah. I can probably. I don't know if can... This is the highest resolution, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, so the the six main spikes, uh, it, they are due to basically the the hexagonal the hexagonal shape of uh, each segment and the overall exam, hexagonal shape. So could, could, do you have the the image I posted on Twitter with where you see like the different pupil size? Uh, so this this is this is from a report uh, made in 2007 by some uh, space telescope science institute colleagues. So you see you see the the leftmost image yeah. is just a plain uh, circle circular pupil uh, on the left, and what you get as an image so. We, we, what we say pupil is basically uh, your primary mirror, if you think about it. You know, it's not exactly true, but um, this is the entrance aperture of the telescope. So, so it's sort of so, it's sort of the Fourier transform of the aperture, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So you go, you do, you get a Fourier transform yeah. between the top and the bottom here. So it, make, it makes one of these sync functions the, or whatever it is. I got, yeah. I forget my Fourier analysis from uh, from university, but I remember yeah, when you so, have a square, you get the sync function and all this kind of. Th Thing, yeah exactly exactly a sync function yeah. so so yeah so because the telescope is not infinite you know it has it has basically a a, a sharp edge yeah. you know uh, that causes a diffraction uh, pattern and that's why even even the the circular one is giving you con concentric ring around a very bright core yeah and that's what we call uh, point spread function or that's and, and to get this image, you have to find you have to look at a, a, a unresolved point. So it can be, a, you know, a little light that you put hundreds of yeah. meters away if you have a, a camera, or uh, in our case, we use a star in space, right? Yeah. Um, and so, and then you know, so that okay, so it's a it's a very bright core and circular uh, rings, and that's called an airy pattern, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And if, okay, if you go to an hexagonal uh, entrance aperture, then you get you already break, the Ah, uh, you're breaking the symmetry of the circle now. Exactly. So you get the and in fact, yeah. Yeah. Each of each of the each of the directions of the of the edge yeah. makes a spike in the per perpendicular direction. Makes sense. Right? So, yeah. so you have two parallels, you know, you have you have three sets of parallels. And so you get uh, three sets of perpendicular. And, and then I guess there's these these tiny extra images that are maybe the corners. I'm not sure because there's different distances to the edge, I guess, from the from the middle. And you get lots of other fine structures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. You, you get some interference. Uh, so so okay, optics. You know, uh, it's doing interferences. You know, it's a it's a. Uh, it's a wave. It's also. It's not just particles. It's also a wave, right? Yeah. And so, with waves, you can make interferences that are either constructive or destructive. So, yeah. Yeah. everywhere it's bright, it's because the interference was constructive, and everywhere it's dark, it means it was destructive. Yeah. And so, you get some kind of islands of of uh, positive, and then some that are basically uh, uh, cancelled out. Yeah. Anyway, so 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 this would be the diffraction pattern of one segment. Yeah. 
but it would also be the diffraction pattern of the whole telescope if it were um, a one hexagon. big hexagon, but it isn't. Yeah. yeah, if it were just one big hexagon, you get the same pattern, but the sh the, the size of the diffraction is smaller. Yeah, because it's yeah. bigger telescope. Yeah, right. So then, so then the, the center one is uh, is basically close to what we have. It's a hexagon, uh, but perfect. Yeah. Right? yeah, it's it's a hexagon made of eighteen hexagon, but perfect. There are no gaps, no nothing. Yeah, and you see, you already get like a snowflake type of thing. Yeah, because you get more interferences between and more edges and yeah. more complexity. Yeah, uh, and then if you introduce the little gaps. <laughs> Uh, so now if we know, bring the real world into it, unfortunately, where we have gaps. Yeah, exactly. Between, so yeah. The, the little gaps between yeah. the, the honeycomb uh, sh uh, shape, yeah. uh, it's making more of those parallels, making perpendicular spikes, yeah. right? And so you get an even more uh, broken down um, snowflake, if you will. Yeah. And then and then we, we have to sustain the secondary mirror, you know, the mirror that's in front of the primary that basically bounces back the light into the instruments. Yeah. Um, this uh, and this is supported by those three. Uh, it's like a Y, a, a upside down Y, right? Yeah. Um, and so the two bottom, uh, the two bottom uh, spider. We call it spider in general in astronomy. But the two bottom uh, parts, uh, they are not really making something new because. It's they're also parallel to one of the main direction that we, we talked about, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's parallel. So it's going to also make the it's going to make the, the the main six spikes, uh, though, actually two of the main spikes slightly broader. Yeah. But then you have the one on top, the one yeah. on top, it's cutting two segments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, and, this and it's a new area. it's a new direction. Yeah. And so that's why that's why we have this horizontal uh thin uh, uh couple packs also amazing so that that, so that explains it step by step where the new sort of pieces of this image come in exactly and so 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 this is a zoom in the center of the image uh if everything were perfect you know there is no aberrations whatsoever here and also the you know the the stretch of the image has been made so that you can actually see everything uh, in the in the red uh, uh, colored image, we colored it red. Uh, all it's the same. If you would zoom inside, you would see this. Yeah, with the correct stretch. If you could basically adjust the ah, you know the, the brightness of your screen so that you can you can actually see the details inside the glow area in so, the sensor. So if I could zoom in enough pattern. to this and it had high enough resolution. Yeah, I would start to see the patterns that you that we just that we just looked at. But uh, exactly. And yeah. so, in fact, some people have done that. Uh, some people have even downloaded the high resolution uh, resolution JPEG and converted it to a uh, fit format that we, that we use in astronomy and started like playing with the, the stretch so that they could see, you know, even fainter galaxies and, uh, uh, you know, fine structure inside the I think I, think I might the, have a, a link where somebody does that, actually, the uh, Possibly, if I scroll down in this article, I think somebody yeah. started to to kind of zoom in and draw all these. Uh, yeah, like but it's, yeah, it's things. still not stretch. Uh, <laughs> I, I, could, I could send you a link where uh, people have actually played a bit further further with this. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. So that that explains where all these or where all those bits come from. I want to know what you think because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So. Please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.